Good afternoon, commissioners in hearing room. This is Troy Dunning, your host. The recording has started and we are live. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Board of County Commissioners business meeting for Tuesday, August 11, 2020. We do have a quorum. Our first item on your agenda is our Pledge of Allegiance. Would everybody please stand and join us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Mr. Ingalls, we have certification of our agenda today. We do, Mr. Chair. My office has reviewed all items on today's agenda, and they all meet legal approval. And do any of the commissioners have any disclosures for any item on our agenda today? I have none, Mr. Chair, thank you. And I have none, Mr. Chair, thanks. And I have done. So at this time, we'd like to do our employee recognition, so we appreciate everybody to uh, allowing us to do that. Today, I think we have a, a special recognition for a, a few years of service for an individual who has served our county very well. Now I'm gonna call Under Sheriff Holly Nichols and Kluth to the lectern. Thank you, Commissioner's Chair, Holly Nicholson Cluth, Under Sheriff. Uh, today I have the honor of speaking about our Sheriff, Tony Spurlock. About 40 years ago today, August 1st, 1980, Tony Spurlock was hired as a dispatcher for the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. In 1982, he was sworn as a deputy sheriff. Over the last 40 years, he served in almost every division and unit in the Sheriff's Office, detentions, patrol, special teams such as SWAT, as a sergeant, lieutenant, captain in differing divisions, as well as bureau chief in both law enforcement and administrative services division. In 2005, he was appointed under sheriff by Sheriff Dave Weaver. Working for four different sheriffs, Tony was then appointed in 2014 and then elected as a 33, 33rd sheriff of Douglas County. I've worked with Tony for almost 32 of those years, and I can tell you he has one of the sharpest investigative minds I've ever known. Those of us that report to him know that in major incidents, you had better have all of the answers to all of the questions because he will think of something you haven't thought of. Tony gets involved. He knows the way to make a difference is to have a voice. He serves on partnerships and boards and especially his passion for victims of crime. Over many years, he served on the Colorado Crime Victim Services Board several years on the Colorado Human Trafficking Board. He is or has served as the chair of the United, Unified Metropolitan Forensic Crime Lab, Highlands Ranch Law Enforcement Training Facility, Regional Computer Forensic Lab, Rocky Mountain High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area, and on and on. He's also been the director of the County Sheriffs of Colorado during his time as sheriff, and the Colorado Sheriff Representative for Western State Sheriffs Association. And he's served on governor appointed boards such as the Identity Theft Board and the Peace Officer Standard, Standards and Training of Colorado Board. But in addition to his involvement in law enforcement related duties, he has a passion for individuals with special needs and also those with illnesses like cancer. He took the position of State Director of the Law Enforcement Special Olympics Torch Run of Colorado this past year and his leadership in events to raise funds for these athletes is nothing short of obsessive. He's also a champion for causes such as St. Baldrick's and breast cancer awareness. During his time here, he's led units and divisions through many major community disasters like the Heyman fire and many, many critical incidents. During his time as sheriff, most notably the homicide of Zach Parrish and the suicide of one of our sergeants as well as the STEM shooting, the homicide of Kendrick Castillo. He's led us and the community with compassion and poise. Those that work for him will say he's a cop's cop, jumping into events, critical incidents, and we're all on our toes and we hear car one, I'm on scene. And he is, and he's doing the work. 
But most importantly, anyone who knows Tony knows that he leads with his heart. He does what he feels is right, even if it's at personal risk of criticism or unpopularity. Tony's committed his life to this community. You can't have experienced a 40-year career culminating in the last six years as sheriff without many personal sacrifices. And I'm sure his wife Stacy will verify, and his family, that it's a 24-7 job, relentless, and no rest. Tony seems to weather the stress, unpredictability, constant request for presence, opinion, discussion, partnerships with ease. I know that Tony's also a man of faith and a man of family. And after 40 years in public service, I think you and your family realize this is your life, and it is Tony's life. And I'm really honored to be able to speak about him today, and with the utmost of respect, uh, would say, Sheriff, thank you so much for your service. Thank you, Andrew Sheriff. Were you going to call me up next, Commissioner? This is the other oh, thing. Yeah, yeah Sheriff Spurlock, would you like 40, to say a few words? <laughs> 40, 40 years, you just like plow through and come up. Thank, thank you. Holly, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And um, thanks for my beautiful wife for being here, honey. I know my daughter's here. I'm not sure if the boys could make it. Um, but the, thank you. And a couple things that hit me early this morning that uh, just kind of struck me of what goes on in this business of being here 40 years. Um, and if I, if I go from today and go backwards this morning, um, I had the pleasure of being on the phone call with a uh, hundred other sheriffs across this nation with the President of the United States to talk about uh, violence against law enforcement and, and what we were doing collectively across the nation uh, with the National Sheriff Association and, and Western State Sheriffs. Um, and uh, in the midst of all of that, um, I had my counsel there uh, assisting us on an EEOC uh, issue that we were dealing with the federal government. Um, I had the pleasure of one of our youngest victims, and I, I hate to say that, but I think that we will play a, a large role, a one-month-old baby who uh, is a victim of human trafficking that one of my detectives worked on the case, and um, they were able to bring the, the little one over to my office and, uh, and let me meet her for the first time. So when you think about 40 years, um, when Holly said when I started here in August 1, um, 1980, there was a cool building here, a bunch of trees. There was a cool building across the way. Our gas pumps was the Old Stone Church, and um, they hadn't finished. We hadn't. Uh, we were just getting the the uh, occupancy letter of 355 Wilcox Street, um, which is now the Walgreens, and Douglas County was small. Um, there were a couple. Uh, agencies here, Colorado State Patrol. I know Commissioner Thomas uh, was assigned to Troop C for a time, the Castle Rock Police Department, and that was it, and us, the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. And I'd like to think that the four sheriffs that I work for helped make a difference um, in uh, the way that the people of, of Douglas County are treated by law enforcement and the way that the, the uh, people treat us. Um, we get people that offer to bring food trucks over to our, our station. Um, we have uh, people that uh, meet us at the Highland Ranch uh, Division Station and, and bring us uh, food and um, just to say thank you to law enforcement. And it is a pleasure to be the sheriff, and, but probably more so of being an employee of Douglas County government for 40 years. Um, looking back on uh, the people that I um, grew up with and people that I have uh, grown old with. Uh, there were some uh, there were some young people here that we all had we had good hair like Commissioner Layden and now now they're silvery like you and me, Commissioner Partridge. Um, so it is an honor to have been part of it. But there were there were and are many sacrifices and. Um, my, uh, my, my wonderful wife, Stacy has borne the, the brunt of a lot of that. My children did as well. Um, 
because if you're going to get into this business, you get into it all, all in. And, um, and so you, you carry them with you. They're like, okay, hey, we're, we, this is not a family event. This is a law enforcement event. And, and you, you go through that. But it wasn't all just law enforcement. There was a ton of things we did for the county that was awesome. And uh, all the things that Douglas County has done, the county fair, um, I get, as the sheriff, I get to be, uh, the cool part about it is I get to sit on the board. But in 1980, um, I got told by the sheriff, you were going to the fairgrounds, and, and the, the fairgrounds wasn't what it is today, folks. So if you're watching online, and thank you for those of you who are watching online, and, and the staff back at the sheriff's office watching, it was a different world. There was no asphalt anywhere. It was all dirty and gray and dusty, but it was some, some serious cowboying. And uh, that's where you went to work, and you, and you got the pleasure of meeting uh, the original Douglas County folks um, and, and watch Douglas County grow. And uh, I live in a, in a community now that was a field uh, when I first started here. And uh, I think a lot of us have seen that, that growth. And so I've, I've, I've enjoyed the 40 years. I've had a good time. Um, I have um, a few things left I want to do. My wife told me I'm not supposed to put it on my phone because it's, a, it's not a good, good stressor. But I actually have on my phone how many hours left I have as a Douglas County employee, and it's two years and five months ish or so. Um, but I got a little bit of time left, and I have a lot of ideas I think that we can do to not only to better the county, but to, to better the employees that work here in Douglas County and to encourage them to stay, to hang on. Um, I, I couldn't imagine myself working anywhere else, and I couldn't imagine myself serving any other community or being a part of any other community and encourage the, the young employees of Douglas County um, when it gets difficult. It'll be all right. Just, it'll just hang in there just a little bit. It'll be all right. And then you will see how wonderful it is to, to be a part of and, and to uh, see this right here, you know, Douglas County, um, how important it is and how um, impactful we have become in the state of Colorado and impactful where we have become nationally I know you commissioners, all three of you, get invited to Washington, D.C. to represent the people of Douglas County. And I was honored to be invited to, to be on the phone call with the president today to represent the sheriffs um, and, and other sheriffs uh, around the state and in the, the nation. And that all came from the sacrifice of all the employees that work here and all the people that have been uh, members of Douglas County government and, and serve the people. So um, I, I, my wish is, is that everyone hangs in there and that everyone can at some point be, and I don't want to wish this on everybody, but 40 years is a long, awful doggone time. So maybe some of you might want to leave earlier around the 25 or 30 bracket, but um, it, it has been an incredible ride and an incredible pleasure. And to, to be honest with you, I completely forgot that August 1st was my 40th anniversary. I actually had a quartermaster make me this shirt because I needed a new shirt, um, but I had uh, completely uh, forgot that it was even that time of the year and um, it, because you just become part of, of the daily fiber of Douglas County and what Douglas County is about. So um, I wouldn't be here if it hadn't have been for my wife and the support of my children um, and really the support of the staff and the people who've made a difference here uh, that, are, that are here or that are on, on the web uh, watching. Um, every, every member of the Douglas County Sheriff's Office makes a difference. And the, the leaders that I've served with, the four and myself, have got the pleasure of, of getting the accolades from their work. And um, that's part of it. As soon as I leave here, I'm going to Larkspur to do an interview on Dateline because of my detectives. Some of them are in this room here solved the case, a cold case, um, the uh, Helene Przinsky murder case. And that wasn't because of me. That was because of the men and women of the Douglas County Sheriff's Office doing awesome work and the support of the Board of County Commissioners and, and, and allowing us to uh, um, be creative and do things. So uh, thank you all. Thank you for this honor. I appreciate it. And Under Sheriff Holly, thank you for the kind words. And, uh, and I appreciate it.
thanks for having me sit in the one seat that's the only one that's got the little all four dots around it. I'm sure what that means, so. But I'll behave myself while I'm here, so. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Chair. Well, Sheriff, uh, what a tremendous, tremendous honor to even sit in this seat before you and to be able to honor not one year, not five years, not 10 years, not 20 years, but 40 years in this county. You said something so prolific, which is you are part of the fiber of what Douglas County is, and, and that couldn't be truer. Uh, I'm in my second year of elected office, and in my first year, I will never forget on May 7th getting a text message from Holly Cluth that there had been a shooting in this county. And we were immediately directed to go down to the AMC, to the command center, uh, where you were there, the FBI was there, and a lot of other folks. And then we were shoved out into a press conference, and I'd only been in office for a, a number of months. And the cool, the calm, and the collected nature in which you addressed that situation that day and for our entire community was an inspiration to me as an elected leader in this county of how to do things the right way. You fast forward to the end of that year and the work that you and this entire team did with regard to solving a very old cold case, almost as old as, as you've been around since 1980. Uh, but what a tremendous accomplishment, and I thank you for allowing us to be part of that, that work in a, in a very small way, but it was, it was truly remarkable. I know that uh, this year is another year where uh, I was told, hey, uh, you know, after the first one, this, this will be a breeze, um, and it's been anything but. With both the global pandemic and all of the unrest we've seen out there, you have handled that with such dignity and such aplomb. I think that you are not only a regional leader, but a state and national one, as, as indicated by the call that you had today. So we are so thankful to have you representing uh, what good law enforcement looks like in this county. Uh, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants, and you are one of those that allows me to know what the fiber of Douglas County is all about. So I thank you very much, Sheriff, for your service. So, Tony, I think I met you, I'm thinking 36 years ago, when I came to the State Patrol in 1984. I think the population of Castle Rock then was 8,000. And we were always trying to make sure we all had enough cars to go out for our shifts, right? Because we didn't always have enough cars. Um, but there were so few of us that I often would pull over a car on I-25 and as I was at the window talking to the driver, I would see a Douglas County deputy pull in behind me. And I know there were times you were on a stop and I would see you or I would hear you go out on your stop and we backed each other up because that's all we had were each other. I think there were three state troopers on a shift. So we knew we had to depend on each other and work with each other. And I too remember 355 South Wilcox. Um, we would have to drive around the back to get to the jail and was the Sally Port big enough to pull in and get out of our cars in? No. So <laughs> we would pull outside the Sally Port and then walk in through the Sally Port. Um, but those were the good old days. We would walk into the jail and you could see everybody that was in the jail. Um, so where I'm going with this is this county has grown amazingly well. And one of the reasons it has is because of leaders like you. I left here in 91 when the State Patrol transferred me out. And when I was in Durango, I bought my house back in Douglas County. See, I had had the opportunity to, to work and live all over this state. And there was no better county than Douglas. So I came back here to Douglas in 1999, and I've been here ever since, because it is unlike any other county in this state. And it's because of people like you who have stayed here and I, I see so many people here, Tim, Dave, I've known you for years when you were at Jeffco. Um, there's just so many of you, Holly in the room, Kevin, uh, Stacy, I've known you forever. There's so many of you that have made this county amazing because we all know that if we don't have good public safety, we don't have prosperity and we don't have health 
And so this is where it starts with all the people in the room. I remember when I was at State Patrol headquarters, I was on the second floor with the chief, and all of a sudden I heard a familiar voice, and you were down at the end of the hall. I don't know if you were with DCJ on some kind of committee. What, what board were you on then? Because you've been on boards all over the place. Uh, but I thought, that's Tony Spurlock. So we went down and we had a conversation in the hall there. Um, on the Haida board, we would see each other at Haida all the time. So even though we were on different paths, we were still seeing each other, and you would always let me know about what was going on at the Sheriff's Department. Um, I remember when Lincoln dead at Yosemite and Lincoln dead ended just south of Lincoln. Remember, there was a little empty space there that we would park our patrol cars down there and get caught up on reports, and, and we would talk there often. So, you know, this, this county has grown a lot and part of it is because of, of your leadership. So I would like to thank you and everybody here who has been a part of making Douglas the amazing place that it is. So thank you for your service. And Stacy, it's not hard being beside a law enforcement officer, so thank you for what you've done as well. Sheriff, so many things been said, but I think uh, what is most impressive is to see there's only standing room only in this room today for the men and women that you lead. And uh, that is just a phenomenal sight to see the support that you have, but they also know you support them. And I think our residents don't realize the importance of, many of them don't realize the importance of law enforcement. And I've said it over and over again, but it is one reason that Douglas County is who Douglas County is today is because of the safety and security we have, not from individuals themselves, but from law enforcement, whether it's the Douglas County Sheriff or the other police office offices that we have in our uh, police departments that we have in our county. But you are the leader, no doubt, of our county. And it, it's so obvious that you have the support from the many here, but this whole community. I love it when we go to events because the room lights up when you step up there. And part of it is your personality. You're very warm, you're very thoughtful, you always have the right things to say, but it's your leadership that has mattered. No doubt you serve with some great ones, you've had many mentors, but you are a mentor to the many men and women here in this room, and those are, aren't even on the department yet. They'll remember Tony Spurlock. So I know you got two more years, but I only have a few more months, and it's been a real pleasure for the time that I've been able, be, been able to serve with you and get those uh, phone calls. Whenever I see that Spurlock come up on the phone, you wonder, okay, is it something good or something bad? But regardless, it's always handled with the utmost professionalism and a great plan and a great operations carried out very well. So professionally and personally, I think. Mr. Chair, can we rise to give him another standing ovation and to acknowledge his wonderful wife and his family? And relax. then we'd like to have a picture. I want Lance's mask. Can I borrow that one? Okay. Now you're welcome to stay for the rest of the hearing, but I think once uh, 
once we're ready to go on our next agenda, the room is pretty much going to clear. So I'm going to give time to for the room to clear. But Tony, thank you so much, Under Sheriff. All the music clue, thank you for the introduction here, and thank you for watching out for us and all you do. God bless. And for those of you listening online, we just lost about 90% of our audience for good reason. It's great to see that support for our sheriff and for our law enforcement. It brings us to our next item on our agenda. Item number two is our citizen comments and organizational comments. It's at this time, if there's anyone in the audience that would like to address the board regarding any issue that is either not on our consent agenda or a regular agenda, I'd like to have you come forward. If there's anyone to address the board? Seeing no one in the room, I'll ask Ms. Dunning if there's anyone online, any hands raised? Yes, sir, thank you, Commissioner Partridge. I do have Fran on the line and she would like to comment and she is now unmuted. Fran, you are live, go ahead. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, Fran, hopefully you can hear, can you hear me? Yes, and Fran, if you wouldn't mind saying your name and spelling your last name. Sure, name, sure. it's record. Fran, F-R-A-N, Santagata, S-A-N-T-A-G-A-T-A. -A -A. I live at 8533 Liverpool Circle in Littleton. And I, I'm hoping that Sheriff Sproulak can hear me as he's walking out the door, but I really wanted to thank him for his leadership and his service to the community. Um, I had the honor of serving under him um, as the emergency manager for the county. And uh, his leadership was phenomenal during some of the worst times that we had to face uh, while I was there. So um, all of, of Under Sheriff uh, Holly's comments uh, are absolutely correct. He is phenomenal during a crisis. He's phenomenal with a giant heart, um, with his concern for victims. Um, so I'm so glad that I was able to jump online today. Uh, like the rest of the world, I'm teleworking uh, due to COVID. Um, so uh, I just wanted to share that and also to thank the commissioners for um, their work with COVID and with Tri-County Health Department. This has been a really difficult type of an emergency, something that none of us have experienced in the past. And the way the board has been able to navigate the intricacies of this and provide leadership during this difficult time. Um, I'm just so impressed and the transparency that you have all offered. I've been on many of the calls. I haven't spoken up. I've just listened because everybody else has asked all of the right questions and the way you've ha handled the questions that have been tossed to you has been phenomenal. Um, so thank you for continuing to partner with Tri-County Health as well, because I think um, as a team, you will lead um, the county through this really difficult time and we're gonna come out really well on the other end. So thank you all. Fran, nice to hear your voice. Thank you for your comments. And Fran, thank you too for your service to this county and our state. We appreciate you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else online, Ms. Dunning? Commissioner Partridge, I see no other hands raised. Very well. We move on now to item number three, our consent agenda. Is there anyone in the audience or anyone online would, that would like to address the board regarding any item on the consent agenda, items A through N? Seeing no one in the room, anyone online? Commissioner Partridge, I see no hands raised on any of the consent agenda items. Very well, thank you. And I bring back to the board, and I believe Commissioner Layden would like to address item I. I would, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I do see Captain Hayden is here and would like to, uh, if possible, hear item I on the consent agenda. 
Commissioner Lee, would you like to actually pull the uh, item to hear it, or would you like to have some comments from Com uh, Captain Hyden now and leave it on the consent agenda? I, I think if we leave it on the consent agenda and just receive some comments from the captain, that should be sufficient. Very well, thank you. Captain Hyden. Good afternoon. Uh, Brad Hyden, Captain of the Support Services Division with the Sheriff's Office. Would you like me to ask specific questions or just read kind of what we're presenting? Or I think if you're able to walk through the presentation a little bit, that might be helpful. So this is an extension of our current contract with Axon Enterprise, also known as Taser International, for an additional five years. But we currently are going to have 263 body cameras. And due to Senate Bill 20-217, um, it's going to require everyone in the sheriff's office to have a body camera. And that's every commission officer, including the reserves. So we're going to have to add 160 cameras to our existing 263. The initial contract was put in place June 28th of 2016. And we've uh, had three previous amendments. Those were to add additional officers when the SROs came on. We also added additional vehicles. And uh, now we are adding um, two additional vehicles and additional body cameras. One of the things that um, in 2016, we had 236 body cameras and 236 tasers in a plan called the Officer Safety Plan that Axon offers. That includes unlimited storage data. We are right now at 212 terabytes of video in our system that is held in the cloud and not responsible for any IT support or anything because it's in the cloud called evidence.com. So this extension would add 160 body cameras and a new taser, which is called the Taser 7, under the Officer Safety Plan 7. Officer Safety Plan 7 would then allow us to have a new taser for every officer. Some of the uh, um, Taser X2 models that we had purchased Previous to the October, um, the, sorry, the June 28th, 2016, and have expired, and there's no more warranty. So when they go bad, we have we have to buy a brand new one. Um, <clears throat> so we are ex requiring the new contract would be the best way, price wise, to both tie the body camera and the taser together for this discounted price. We also are receiving a source well discount of 5% that was just offered this year um, to all hardware and some software. The, um, um, and that goes throughout the whole five-year contract, 5% 5 off uh, the pricing of everything. So the total cost of the contract would be $4,845,369.10 for the five-year contract. We are also receiving a credit of $180 for our old tasers each. So uh, for the 403 um, new officer safety plans, we'll get a credit of 72,540. Additional features that um, we're also gonna get is uh, auto redaction. One of the things that Senate Bill 20-217 requires is a faster turnaround under certain circumstances to get the video to the family members. And so this auto redaction can assist us in that process. So it has to be reviewed, but we can let it run overnight. And especially when you have a very large case, um, one of them is when an officer um, shoots and kills a suspect in the line of duty, that we have a deadline to get that video to the family. And those cases usually have multiple officer response, including the body cameras and the in-car fleet cameras and then um, we go into interviews. So if we need to do redaction, we have to give that, give them all the video within 14 days. And there'd be about no way for us to get that done on previous cases, like the STEM shooting. There'd be no way that we could uh, get that information out, even though officers did not shoot anyone on that one. Um, so that's an example. Um, it also has a uh, signal sidearm. So one of the things that, uh, the Senate Bill 20-217 requires is making sure we turn our body cameras on and off at the appropriate times. They believe some officers have not turned their body cameras on intentionally. And so we currently have Axon Signal in our X2 tasers offered 
um, issued to our uh, patrol officers and that when the axon taser is turned on, it actually turns on the body camera for you automatically. You don't have to think about two things. Well, this new plan, Officer Safety Plan 7, allows you to also add an additional device that attaches to your holster and it detects movement of your firearm as you draw it, any metal moving, it will actually turn on your body camera for you. There have been instances where officers are shot at immediately and they you know, can't think about turning on their body camera first before you know, draw, drawing their weapon and returning fire. So <clears throat> this is a way to turn that on. Also in our cars, we have an axon signal device which actually is attached to the lights. And when the lights go to our position one on our slide switch, it automatically sends a signal to the body camera and the in-car camera to turn on. And uh, we, all of the Axon devices we've set for a one minute buffer. So there's no audio, but you're actually recording video kind of also only going back into the future because it's always recording. As soon as you start it, you get audio, but you hear a, have a whole minute of previous recorded video when the devices are in the standby mode for both the fleet and for the body cameras. Is there any specific questions? Yeah. So that's really helpful. I appreciate the, the specific insight there. I, I think the general theme is the perspective we certainly share in Douglas County that this sheriff's office is uh, not only a local leader, but a, a statewide leader in addressing uh, issues that we've seen recently in a way that is thoughtful. Uh, proactive and certainly equal for all. So I think uh, you're to be commended for the incredible work that you already have done and certainly the additional impact associated with this bill is something that uh, was important for me to uh, at least hear from you and get a sense of, of what additional was being required beyond the good work that you're already doing. So I think that's helpful and, and just to clarify, so 100% of that $4.8 million is really associated with the, the increased expectations created by 217. Correct, and, and then we're, ex we're kind of renewing our contract from uh, September 1st all the way till October, August 31st of 2025. So we're extending it into the future, holding the current pricing. I negotiated a lower price for all the body cameras, and um, we kind of are also holding our 2016 pricing on our interview rooms and on our um, in-car cameras um, so that there, there's a discount. And then there, and this new source flow discount gave us a discount on top of holding those pricing. Okay. Well, I just wanted to thank you for the, the good work that you already have done up to this point and certainly hope that this addi additional funding will provide those, those efficiencies that you mentioned. So I have no further questions or comment, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Captain Hyden. Appreciate it. Thank you. This time, I'll ask the board if there's any further questions on the consent agenda. If not, we'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I have a motion to approve the request in all items A through N of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, state aye. 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 The motion passes. Consent agenda approved. Moves us on to item number four, our regular agenda. Our first item on the agenda is the adoption of ordinance number 0-020-001 an ordinance for the regulation of traffic and parking, repealing all ordinances, resolutions, and conflict therewith, and providing penalties for violation thereof. On the first reading, presenting for the Sheriff's Office, Lieutenant Ron Hanneman. Commissioner Partridge, this is your host, Troy. Um, before he starts, sir, I do have someone that is waiting to comment on the consent agenda briefly. Would that be okay, sir? Yes, I'm gonna take Chair Prerogative. Uh, thank you, Ms. Dunning, for reminding me. I believe there's a Mr. James Arnold that would like to address the board regarding item G on our consent agenda. Yes, uh, thank you, commissioners. My name is James Arnold. I live at 10227 Climbrook Way in Highlands Ranch. Um, I'm the troop committee chair of Boy Scout Troop 633 in Highlands Ranch. We're the oldest troop in Highlands Ranch, and because we're old, we're large. And um, because of COVID, we've had uh, difficulty meeting indoors or meeting in general period. And so we just wanna say thank you for um, allowing us the special use of the pavilion at um, the regional park, because that will allow us to have a safe meeting to recognize our youth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Earl. And we appreciate the Boy Scouts. And I would just say I used the old 
Boy Scout motto would be prepared just earlier in the week. So thank you, and we look forward to being able to provide this for you. So at this time, I apologize, and now we'll call Lieutenant Ron Hannivan. Thank you, thank you, um, Commissioners, Chair. Uh, Ron Hannivan, Douglas County Sheriff's Office, Lieutenant um, in Patrol, uh, specifically over our traffic team. Uh, today, we seek the adoption of an ordinance uh, for the regulation of traffic and parking, repealing all ordinances and resolutions in conflict, and providing penalties for violation uh, of, of basically the model traffic code. So the last ordinance that was passed was in 2011, and so what this ordinance would do is it would replace the 2011 ordinance, which was the 2010 model traffic code. Um, I'm not sure if you have any specific questions, but that's our purpose for today. All right. Thank you, Lieutenant. Questions for Lieutenant Hanneman? Lieutenant, thank you for bringing this forward. Um, I just have a, a question to clarify for the people listening. So what this does is that when your officers enforce a traffic violation that is not a state charge like a DUI, a driving under influence charge, that is then the, the fines from that then come to the county instead of going to the state. So that's the distinction between state charges and what is being adopted today as the model traffic code. Is, is that the difference in what we're doing here today? Yeah, it's, it's basically what we're looking for is infractions. So uh, it would not apply to any of the misdemeanor charges, um, and, and that's exactly right, Commissioner. It, it would allow for, continue to allow for any citations that we write that would be in county court versus state court. It allows for that uh, revenue to actually go back to uh, Douglas County rather than going back to the state. And so we're talking about tickets like low-level speeding charges, uh, careless driving? Uh, it would be uh, careless. It would be uh, parking, any of the parking violations, speed. Um, it's actually a, a rather large amount of the citations that we can uh, write, uh, the infractions that we're able to write uh, that actually allow us to keep it here locally. So, yeah, if it's a DUI, anything that's a misdemeanor, though, um, we would still continue to charge that. However, it would be charged into state court rather than to county court. So do these charges go through the district attorney's office? Uh, th uh, they do not. So um, what ends up happening is the misdemeanor charges continue to go through the district attorney's office. However, uh, what ends up happening with a traffic infraction is the, for all intents and purposes, the officer, the deputy, is actually the, uh, the, the district attorney. They're the ones that go into court, and they're the ones that actually have, uh, um, they have the court case that they're basically presenting. Lieutenant, I explain. I um, I appreciate your explanation for people who are listening or making the record for what it is that we are doing involving our, all levels of government. So we're not doing anything really that impacts the DA's office or, the, or um, it, it's the district, it's the court tickets that the deputies write, like infractions, low-level speeding, et cetera. So it, it kind of um, makes things more efficient. That's correct. And, and uh, Commissioner, what we're doing here is... is uh We've already adopted the 2010 model traffic code, and now what we're doing is, for house cleaning purposes, we're basically cleaning up an, or, uh, you know, an ordinance that was, that was adopted 10 years ago and basically adopting an ordinance that has been rewritten at the, the state level for the model traffic code, which has been adopted multiple times, and basically cleaning it up, bringing it up to date. I appreciate that explanation for the record, Lieutenant. Thank you. Thank you. And I have new questions, Lieutenant. Just appreciate you updating with the efficiencies that you mentioned. Great. Thank you, Lieutenant. Thank you. Appreciate it. This time, is there anyone in the audience, either in the room or on the phone, who would like to address the board regarding item 4A? Seeing no one in the room, is there anyone on the phone? I see no hands raised, Commissioner. Very well. I would bring it back to the board for uh, any further questions, discussions, and or a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion adopting ordinance number 0020-001, an ordinance for the regulation of traffic and parking, repealing all ordinances and resolutions in conflict therewith, and providing penalties for violation thereof on first reading, and ordering publication of said ordinance in the Douglas County News Press. Second. We have a motion and second. No further discussion. All in favor, state aye. 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 Motion passes. So this will be posted in the news press, and I imagine we will probably hear this uh, for a second reading on our August 25th hearing. I'm looking at Attorney Ingalls. 
Yes, sir. You'll be adopting it at, at final hearing on, I think it is the 26th. Uh, what happens next is the entire ordinance is published uh, in the Douglas County News Press at least 10 days before your next hearing. So assuming that gets done this week, you'll have final decision on this matter on the 26th. Good. And I think that may be the August 25th to be the Tuesday. Let's do that. Okay, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, our next item on the agenda, B, is the East West Regional Trail Construction Contract for $2,220,139 with ECI Site Construction Management Incorporated. Presenting for staff, Randall Burkhart, who I see. Uh, good Randy, afternoon, Commissioners. Randy, you on the line? Yeah. Oh, there you Can are. You gotcha. Yes. yes. Uh, good afternoon, Commissioners. Randy Burkhart representing Park staff. Next slide. We, uh, I have a little, having a bandwidth problem, so we're kind of tag teaming this, and um, CJ in the planning department is running the slideshow. Uh, so the request today is for the approval of purchase order 02020 for the construction of the final portion of the East West Regional Trail from the current I-25 underpass to the connection with the Town of Parker Trail System at the underpass located at Chambers Road. The construction of this section will include but not be limited to all machinery, materials, and labor necessary to complete the approximate four miles of soft surface trail, two miles of fence, and the pedestrian bridge abutments. The, excuse me, the pedestrian bridge will be bid separately and is currently going through the Douglas County bidding process. ECI Site Construction Management Incorporated was the lowest qualified bid at $2,220,139. Next, next slide, CJ. This section of the East West Regional Trail is located within the city of Lone Tree and is in the north central portion of Douglas County. Next section, please, or next slide. This slide shows the East West Regional Trail from the connection at I-25 underpass into the uh, town of Parker's Chamber Road, Chambers Road underpass. Multiple uh, local trail connections will also be constructed by others in the future from the city of Lone Tree, the Ruder Hess Reservoir Project, and the Meridian Development uh, connecting into this regional trail. Construction of this final section of the East West Regional Trail will be the culmination of an over 30 year design and construction project. Next slide, please. The East West Regional Trail has been a multi-year project and has included multiple partners uh, throughout the different sections as it uh, connects the communities throughout the northern portion of Douglas County. Construction on the 30 mile East West Regional Trail was begun in 2002 and to date approximately 25 miles of the trail have been constructed. This last section uh, to complete, will complete it from I-25 to the town of Parker. When completed, Parker will be connected to Highlands Ranch through a regional trail system. The East West Regional Trail is also a portion of a much larger statewide trail system that connects the Denver metro area to other areas of the state. And as I'm fond of saying, this will connect us to Durango. Next slide, please. The bidding of this project followed the Douglas County bidding procedures and was advertised in the Rocky Mountain e-purchasing in June of 2020. Eight bids were received and opened uh, publicly July 8th uh, with ECI construction site management, uh, the lowest qualified bid at $2,220,139. And in that bid, of the eight bids, there was approximately an eight, a 7% variance in the lowest uh, four bids, so the bidding was really tight. We felt we got a great bid. Uh, next slide, please. Douglas County on the East West Regional Trail project has been able to le leverage funding uh, and is eligible for financial reimbursement on this project through the $2 million GOCO grant that we received in 2016. This, um, this grant was done in conjunction with the Town of Parker and was awarded by GOCO for the completion of the East West Trail from Lone Tree to the Cherry Creek Regional Trail in Parker. Parker has completed their section from Chambers Road to Cherry Creek. Uh, $1 million is now available to Douglas County for the completion of the trail section from I-25 to, to the town of Parker. Through various funding partnerships, Douglas County on this section has obtained more than $2 million uh, in partnership funding. Next slide, please. The Parks, Trails, and Building Ground Division staff supports the award 
of request for bid 02020 for an amount not to exceed $2,220,139 to ECI construction management, or site construction management, for the construction of a portion of the East West Trail from I-25 to the town of Parker. Next slide, please. This concludes my presentation. I am now available for any questions. Questions for Randy. Randy, thank you for that information. If we could go back on your slide a couple on the funding partners. Uh-huh. So at first I thought that was $1,000, but there's a zero missing, right? So it's a million? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. And so GoCo is giving us a million of the, the two... Let's see. We had applied for a $2 million grant with the town of Parker, and it was an 80-20 split. We received 600000 for the uh, section of the trail from um, the Lone Tree Trail connection above Cabela's to Schweiger Ranch, and this is the additional million dollars that was available through that grant will be applied to this portion of the trail. So the total amount for this project is a little over $2.2 million and a million will be coming from the grant we are anticipating. Will the rest come from the open space sales tax that goes over to the, the Parks Department? Uh, I believe that's the fund that is coming from. I, I could check with you um, through finance and get that those exact numbers for you if you'd like. Okay, I just, when I went through the packet, I wrote a note here, does it come from open space tax? Because it wasn't clear to me where the funding was coming from, and I imagine that it is coming from that open space piece. So. Um, I think this is a great project. We know that our citizens enjoy their trails to walk on. So thank you for this presentation, Randy. Yes, thank you. Randy, thank you for the clarification on the financial piece. And uh, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity to share in the grand opening last year on October 12th, uh, the connection between the Schweiger Ranch Trailhead and uh, Cabela Drive in Lone Tree. The enthusiasm from our citizens and our local leaders with regard to this trail, are, it's truly phenomenal. And I would agree that uh, there's just such a high demand for trail usage uh, in and around this county. So uh, no questions, just uh, excitement and, and enthusiasm for what you're doing there. Great, thank you very much. Randy, thank you again, great presentation. Yes, I agree with Commissioner Layden, wonderful. The, we got to tour the West side of the west side of I-25 trail last year. And Randy, is this the same company that completed that section of the trail? Uh, no, it is not. This is uh, uh, another company, but we have um, multiple years and multiple projects of experience with them, and we feel that they'll do a great job for us. Very well. And this is a non-motorized trail, and so what all types of uh, traffic would you expect on this? Uh, this will be pedestrian, equestrian, and uh, bicycle, Very well. and uh, a any uh, other handicap-related vehicles as approved through the Americans with Disabilities Act. Thank you. No further questions? Thank you, Randy. Uh -huh. At this time, I'd like uh, for the audience, either in the room or on the phone, who would like to address the board regarding item 4B. Seeing no one in the room, Ms. Dunning, anyone on the phone? Thank you, Commissioner. I see no hands raised. Very well. This time, I'll post public comment and bring it back to the board for any further questions, discussion, and or motion. Mr. Chair, I have a motion to approve the East-West Regional Trail construction contract for $2,220,139 with ECI Site Construction Management, Inc. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor, state aye. 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 The motion passes. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. It's going to be a beautiful continuation of that trail. And I know Thank you, very much. you bet. Great to tie in the Parker and Lone Tree residents there. Our next item, 3C, is a purchase of a conservation easement on Dittmar's Ranch in amount of $1 million, presenting for staff. The ever present and tough as nails. Open Space Director Cheryl Matthews. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Cheryl Matthews for staff. As you indicated, this is a request for a resolution approving a $1 million expenditure for a partial 
uh, purchase of the conservation easement on the historic Dittmars Ranch. The conservation fund will be putting up the other million dollars. I was planning to do a, a PowerPoint to show pictures because Commissioner Layden didn't get to see the property and the people all online. However, with a cast on one hand, it's really hard to type. So anyway, this is a wonderful historic ranch. It is 1,500 acres. The other half of the ranch was sold off a number of years ago, and that became Crystal Valley. So this is the most pristine part of what was the historic ranch. It's surrounded on three sides by the JA, which is also protected permanently with a conservation easement. And it was one of the properties identified in the South I-25 Conservation Corridor Study that the county and the conservation fund did a number of years ago. So this is, this is a really unique opportunity to kind of close that whole area, having it permanently protected. And you, I sent you all a copy of the appraisal that was $10 million to buy the property, $5.5 million value on the conservation easement, and the Dittmars are willing to sell that for $2 million, which is a real bargain. So that will be split between the conservation fund and the county. And uh, the, the easement will be held by Douglas Land Conservancy, so we won't have responsibility for the monitoring, although I'm hoping that we can get out there occasionally and see it. And that was the other thing, you know, the question had come up about public access, and Sydney Macy is, is here also to be able to answer any questions, but she also negotiated for uh, at least four guided hikes a year so that we can get out and actually see the property, and you all might want to sign up for some of those because, as you saw, it's an absolutely spectacular property. So it's really exciting, and if you have any questions for myself or Sydney, I'd be happy to answer those. There we go. Thank you, Cheryl. Questions for Cheryl? Cheryl, I'm just going to clarify for people who are listening in that this million dollars is not coming from the general fund. It is coming from the open space tax yes. that the citizens put on themselves. It's 0.17 uh, of our one penny sales tax. And so citizens pay that when they purchase things, but it's not general fund money. So this is an excellent way to see how the citizens' money is being spent. So thank you, Sydney, for your work on this as well. Cheryl, I just want to thank you for putting up with an old land use attorney's questions. I know I asked a lot of you and Scott and staff with regard to the appraisal and the due diligence documents, the, uh, the uh, certainly the environmental report and additional documents, and you provided all of that really well. And I think the first thing you learn in private practice is how to spot a deal. And with the value of this property being so incredibly high and the amount that we're being asked to pay for it, it's, it's an incredible bargain for the county. So I, I will be in support of this, and I'm, I'm pleased to, uh, to join my colleagues uh, in, in the uh, $1 million contribution through the, the sales tax fund. Very well. Cheryl, if you toured this, you know, it just brings back the memories of how beautiful Douglas County is. You know, sometimes we don't get out of the suburban part of the county and you realize just a short drive, you're in some of the most beautiful parts of Colorado all the way around. We are so blessed and fortunate to have that. So thank you for bringing this forward because it's really is an amazing deal. Uh, and they just keep coming and get amazed. I think the plan is to have the deal closed at the end of the month, so this approval will allow us to do the electronic transfer at the time of closing. So it should be done by the end of the month. Very well. Thank you. And I'd like to ask if Sydney Macy, Macy representing the Conservation Fund, would like to say a few words. Hi, Commissioners, Sydney Macy with the Conservation Fund out of Boulder, Colorado. Sorry about your arm, Cheryl, I hadn't seen that. <laughs> you were hiding it. Um, I don't really have anything further to add on this deal. I guess I just wanted to um, say hello to Doug <laughs> and acknowledge the um, great partnership we've had. It's been a 25-year partnership, most, uh, you know, really all over the county. We did a lot of work with you guys over in the, in the uh, Chatfield area and along the DuPont property along Highway 85. We've worked all over the county, but, but really the I-25 conservation corridor was um, our main focus with you all. Was, um, and I think our, the first acquisition we did, which was the only 
project ever fully funded by Great Outdoors Colorado back in the day. Um, we purchased the Douglas Heights property, which is the entire backdrop for the old Greenland barn and all that land you see as you exit uh, to the west on the Greenland exit. Um, just the other day in my little office at home, I'm, I'm allegedly retired from the Conservation Fund, but I keep getting hauled back on, on Douglas County projects, which I'm happy to do. But I came across a picture that was taken of me, I call it, you know, Sid and the guys, me, Commissioner Sullivan, Commissioner Christensen, who were both on the board then, obviously, and my good friend Mark Weston, who was chair of the uh, uh, open space committee at the time. And we were all on the top of the JA ranch, right at the clubhouse where you've all been for, for the DLC's picnic. And that was about 1995. That's, I think we were taking them around and showing them the various priority pro projects or properties in that I-25 vision plan. And um, it just, it was interesting that I, you know, saw this frame kind of wedged in someplace behind a bookshelf, pulled it out, and there it was. So it's really just been a delight and an honor and a privilege to work with all of you. I'm glad Doug still talks to me after we got him stuck up on the JA ranch. He was, looked just like that in his coat and tie, but he, uh, I guess, has forgiven us that many years ago. So thank you. I'm happy to ask, answer any questions on Dittmars. Um, it's been a long time in the making, this property. Don Dittmars was kind of suspicious at first, but um, he, he loves his land. He is thrilled to be able to see it protected. So, thank you. Thank you, Sydney. You've been a, had a long history at Douglas County. We hope that continues because you do wonderful work and you have such knowledge that, uh, of the area that we really value your input. So thank you so much and thank you to the Conservation Fund. And I did grow up in Southern Arapahoe County. Not, I'm really not from originally from the People's Republic up there in Boulder. You know. <laughs> so. Oh, you're great. Thank you so much. Yep. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. This time, I'd like to open it up to the audience, either in the room or on the phone. Anyway, Benny, anyone who would like to address the board regarding item 3C. Anyone on the phone, Ms. Dunning? Commissioner, I see no virtual requests. Very well, thank you. I'll close public comment, bring it back to the board for any further questions, discussions, and or a motion. Well, based on the incredible work of many, including Cindy with the uh, Conservation Fund, having a property valued with the CE at 5.5 million and an investment of 1 million from us is just remarkable. So I'm, I'm pleased to make a motion to approve purchase of a conservation easement on Dittmar's Ranch in the amount of $1 million. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion or comments. All in favor, state aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Cheryl, great job again. Thank you. Bring it over. Thank you, Sydney. This brings us to item number 4D. This is a resolution assigning and transferring to the Douglas County Housing Partnership all of Douglas County, Colorado's 2020 allocation, as defined below, from the state ceiling for private activity bonds and authorizing the execution and delivery of an assignment of allocation and other documents in connection therewith. Presenting for staff, Tina Dill. Thank you, Commissioner. Tina Dill, representing Community Development. The request before you today is to approve assigning Douglas County's 2020 private activity bond cap to the Douglas County Housing Partnership. The allocation is for $11,713,967. Excuse me, $11,713,967. It would be used to finance multifamily housing units. Private activity bonds or PABs are tax exempt bonds that can be used for housing, manufacturing, infrastructure or environmental projects. The primary purpose of the PAB program is to encourage private investment for these specific purposes. Douglas County receives an annual allocation of PAB cap through the Colorado Department of Local Affairs using a population-based formula. 
State law requires that the county take action regarding the use or the assignment of PAB cap prior to September 15th. The town of Castle Rock and Parker also receive a PAB allocation. The county partners with Castle Rock and Parker to combine PAB cap through an annual assignment to DCHP. The Douglas County Housing Partnership has an intergovernmental agreement in place to act as an issuing authority of PAB cap allocation. This agreement allows them to issue, manage, and preserve the PAB cap assigned to them. Two developers have expressed interest in using the PAB as a financing tool to build multifamily housing. The map shows the location of the two proposed developments where the owners have requested PAB cap from ha the housing partnership. Bridgewater at Castle Rock, a continuing care campus for seniors, is located in central unincorporated Douglas County. The proposal includes up to 152 units, 50% of which will be considered attainable to residents with incomes at or below 60% of the area median income, which is called uh, referred to as AMI. Previously, Shea Properties built 312 units in the Apex development for low to moderate income families using PAB allocations. This company is proposing a 156 unit development for families with incomes at or below 60% AMI, and Shea expects to close on the property in early 2021. The property is indicated in the center at the top of the map. Is staff's recommendation that the Board of County Commissioners approve the resolution assigning Douglas County's 2020 PAB cap of $11,713,967 to the Douglas County Housing Partnership for multifamily housing. This concludes my presentation, and we have three guests that would like to say a few words to the commissioners. Diane Leavesley, Executive Director of the Douglas County Housing Partnership, is in the audience. Peter Cushaw, Executive Vice President of Shea Properties, and Fred Marenthal, Bond Counsel with Kutek Rock, are online and would like to say a few words. John Bale, also with Kutek Rock, is online, and we're all available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Tina. Good afternoon. Um, the order that we were going to do this in is I was going to say a few words, and then Fred and Peter were. But we're running a little later than um, anticipated, so I wanted to ask them if they'd like to go first, and then I'll go last, because I'm afraid that we'll lose them. So the person who's running the um, audio could maybe ask them if that's okay? Very good. Very well. Ms. Dunning, and would you call to see if Peter Coleshaw or Bond Council are available for comment? Yes, sir, it'll take me a moment. I, de I do see Fred unmuted. Fred, would you like to go first, sir? And Fred, if you would state your name and spell it of your last name and address for the record, please. It appears that Fred does not have any sound, so I will go ahead and unmute Peter and mute Fred. One moment. Hello? Go ahead, Peter. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can, Mr. Colshaw. Uh, yeah, Peter Colshaw, uh, with Executive Vice President with Shea Properties. I'd like to say good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, thank you for your time today and, and, and all you do for the community. Um, I would have been happy to... Uh, speak a little later because happy hour doesn't start until 3.30 at our house now, but uh, uh, since I've been asked to speak now, I'll do that. Um, we, we've, in Meridian in particular, we have been careful to pull existing tenants and potential tenants uh, to see uh, um, what, 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 what we're missing, what we can add to the, com the community and the business community. Um, we hear all sorts of things. We heard uh, needs more of a sense of place. So we've added a lot of signage, new signage programs in Meridian. We've done road improvements which have been requested. They requested connectivity to light rail. Uh, so we've added the bike program, the e-bike program. We were about to add the scooter program just before COVID hit. 
um, amongst many other initiatives. But what we hear uh, on a very consistent basis is the need for affordable workforce housing proximate to the businesses. And we've heard this from both within Meridian and outside of Meridian, from people like Dish Network and Jacobs to Sky Ridge to Park Meadows. So uh, with your support, uh, we, we set about trying to address this requirement um, and offer some alternatives for folks. Our, our first project, as I've mentioned, was Apex West, which was 156 um, affordable apartment homes. Uh, we're fully leased with 300 people on the waiting list. Um, we then opened, just opened in May, uh, right at the what we would think would be the worst possible timing, um, Apex East, which is another 156 unit project. Uh, I, I can, to my amazement, we're 70% leased. Uh, we're leasing as fast as we can reduce, re release the buildings. And we have over a thousand people on the waiting list. So there is a rampant demand for this. Um, the vast majority of these people work uh, very close by. Uh, and, and of course, this lessens the commuting congestion. Uh, to, to achieve these deals, we've been doing them as 4% LIHTC deals, which is basically restricts the uh, the, the uh, rent um, to people who are making 6% uh, of average median income. Uh, and we've been financing these with tax credits, uh, private activity bonds, and then we've been subordinating our own land position to make all this happen. So uh, without the private activity bonds, which are issued for 30 years, as you know, um, we really wouldn't be able to pull these projects off. Um, and so we, we think it's essential and, and very, very appreciative of, of Douglas County's support of these projects. Um, they also, uh, by issuing these activity bonds, essentially make this affordable for the next 30 years, which is great. So um, Shay's had a big commitment to this, as you know. Um, I think we will have almost 700 affordable, attainable housing units within Douglas County in the next year or two. Uh, and we're not necessarily going to stop there. So these are fully amenitized apartments. They are uh, offering a gracious and dignified housing options for Douglas County residents, reducing commuting times, and I think uh, is good for the business community within Douglas County. So I didn't want to go on for too long, but the, that was um, that was my uh, uh, pitch, and I'm very, very appreciative of, every, of all the support we've had from Douglas County and Douglas County Housing Partnership to date. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coleshaw. I think standing. Fred is ready now, sir. Okay, Go ahead well. and unmute. Great. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you, Fred. Excellent. Excellent. I think, as a lawyer, uh, Mr. Chair, you'd understand the frustration of not being heard. <laughs> it was very frightening. Um, good afternoon. I'm Fred Marienthal, M-A-R-I-E-N-T-H-A-L. I'm a partner at QTAC Rock. And we are bond counsel to uh, the Douglas County Housing Partnership and have worked with them for uh, some time on many projects in, in Douglas County. Um, and this is a great time for private activity bonds and multifamily housing. Uh, interest rates are very, very low. Um, and the driver on these transactions are two things. One. Um, are the 4% tax credits, which bring equity into the transactions and help fill the capital stack. And in order to avail uh, oneself of the 4% tax credit, you need to have at least 50% of the project financed with private activity bonds. And so the second driver is the use of the private activity bond volume cap allocation. And uh, we've been very, very busy uh, over the last year, even through the COVID, um, closing multifamily transactions throughout the Front Range region using the 4% tax credit and the private activity bond volume cap allocation. Um, so very, very valuable. It lowers the cost of financing and um, it brings affordable housing to, uh, to your community. And uh, we appreciate your partnership and effort uh, bringing the cap over to the, uh, the housing partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Ms. Leasley. Yes. So the part that I would like to, or I'm supposed to spell my name, Diane Leavesley, L-E-A-V-E-S-L-E-Y, -E -E Executive Director of the Douglas County Housing Partnership. The part that I want to emphasize is, again, something that we talk about all the time, but that's how we work together. So Parker, Castle Rock, and Douglas County have been, since 2015, 
amassing every year their private activity bond cap. And with about two years worth of bond cap that we get from the uh, federal government, the IRS, we have enough to do one of these projects. Prior to ha doing that partnership, when bond cap wasn't being used, it was basically going back to the statewide balance. So what we're doing is keeping that bond cap used for our citizens in our county. And since we've been um, in this partnership, um, since 2015, we've issued for three projects. We've got two more in the works. So um, we've, if you add them all up, it comes out to about 900 units. Um, most of those for families, one of them was for seniors. And um, these are working people who are making between usually forty to sixty thousand dollars a year, but being able to pay rent that's usually about five hundred dollars less than market rent. So those families benefit in that they have funds that they can spend other ways on their medical costs, on their children, on um, education, whatever. So I just want to thank you uh, um, and giving us this opportunity every year to come in front of you and let you know about our progress and um, appreciate that um, I had two partners this year to tell you more about their involvement in as well. So any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Leavesley. Any questions for Ms. Leavesley, Ms. Colshaw, or Bond Council? So if, um, is Peter available, Mr. Colshaw? Yes. Good yeah. afternoon, Peter. It, it's always good to hear from you. I love your accent. Um, and I love what you do for Douglas County. So am I correct that there are already two phases of APEX and this will be the third phase? Yes. Firstly, I don't think I have an accent. <laughs> I guess but, I do then. <laughs> putting that to one side. Uh, yes, there are two phases. So the first phase we did about uh, four or five years ago, which was the one I think you were at the opening uh, for. Uh, the second phase is the one we just opened, and then so it'll be a third phase of about 206 units, so it's slightly bigger. So between the three of them, it'll be about uh, 520 units within Meridian homes, I should say. Perfect. I, I remember when you gave me a tour, and I was amazed at, at how roomy and how pleasant and shiny and sunny and bright they were. Um, so you've done an excellent job with, with this money to help our, our citizens, our, our workforce, have a place to live here in the county. So I appreciate what you've done, and, and I'd like to thank you. Well, thank you. And, and uh, you know, in normal times, we'd love to have a groundbreaking or, a, or an opening and a, a, an event. Uh, so hopefully we'll get to that uh, in the spring here. Count me in. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and I would echo those sentiments. Uh, Mr. Kolshaw, always an incredible product uh, and certainly a wonderful longstanding partner with Douglas County. Uh, many thanks to Mr. Marenthal Council and to Diane for her hard work uh, really running the organization on a day-to-day -day basis. We know that when members of law enforcement or teachers, the workforce can uh, both live and work in Douglas County, it is also a traffic solution and it provides an opportunity for our, our county to thrive uh, beyond what it even already does, which is really wonderful for this community. So just a tremendous thanks to each of you and thank you for spending your time with us virtually today. I know it's a little bit unusual, but uh, <laughs> don't want to keep you from that all important uh, happy hour. So thank you for being here. And I want to thank certainly staff bringing us forward and, and Diane with Housing Partnership. Great job. And, and Mr. Colshaw, you know, one thing I can say is certainly the appreciation for the affordable housing and the, the, what you do for workforce. But when you look at these projects, it just comes to mind the word class. And not just little, you know, little huts. They, it is really a classy project, looks very well, adds a lot of value just to the whole area. And Mr. Koshaw, you, you and Shea Properties has been a great partner with the county. We thank you so much for the working with us on the crime lab land and just the, the wonderful office buildings, commercial space that you provide in Meridian. It's really a, 
a bright spot of Douglas County. We thank you so much and we really appreciate all your efforts and providing this third project coming forward. So thank you and appreciate you so much. Great. You, and I can tell you that you really grabbed the tiger by the tail. So you know where I'm going with that one. We gotta figure out where that came from. <laughs> Very well. Any more questions for staff or the presenters at this time? Thank you. At this time, we'll open it up for the audience, either in the room or on the phone. Anyone would like to address the, the board regarding item 4C or 4D? Ms. Dunning, anyone on the phone? I see no virtual requests. Very well. And no one in the room, so we'll close. Close the public comment, bring it back to the board for any further comments, questions, discussion, and or motion. Mr. Chair, I have a motion to approve a resolution assigning and transferring to the Douglas County Housing Partnership all of Douglas County, Colorado's 2020 allocation from the state ceiling for private activity bonds and authorizing the execution and delivery of an assignment for alloc allocation and other documents in connection therewith. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor, state aye. 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 The motion passes. Congratulations, everyone, and thank you for bringing this forward. Appreciate it. Our next item on the agenda, 4E, is a resolution approving an intergovernment agreement between the Colorado Department of Transportation and the Board of County Commissioners of County of Douglas, State of Colorado, regarding cost sharing for the I-25 South Gaff project from Monument to Cass Rock, associated with CDOT project number NH. PP 0252-450, presenting for staff, Capital Improvements Project Manager, Arthur Griffith. Thank you, commissioners. Um, I think the theme for the day has been collaboration. So this is one more item that we can hopefully celebrate another milestone in collaborating with uh, CDOT, um, their design team, uh, Jacobs and an incredible effort to accelerate the improvements of I-25 um, in a very short order. Um, it was January 2017 that we stood here with uh, um, Mayor Southers and yourself and Shailen Batt and said, we're gonna get this project going and, um, and several milestones which are documented in the memo, I can't help but highlight a few, including the formation of a coalition um, where we rounded up support for this project uh, all the way from Greenwood Village to a commissioner in Cripple Creek, Colorado. So that's quite a, a range of people that uh, recognize the importance and the need to improve I-25. Um, and um, actually that was April of 2017. Uh, shortly thereafter in November, um, El Paso County and Douglas County led the way in submitting an infra grant um, and uh, was for $65 million. It leveraged $250 million from CDOT. Um, and um, that's the largest federal grant that's ever been <laughs> received in Colorado. Um, so that was a huge uh, uh, thing. There was commitments from Pikes Peak uh, Rural Transportation Authority for 15 million and 10 million from Douglas County as well as El Paso County, excuse me, El Paso County and the Pikes Peak Rural uh, committed, committed 10 million, El Paso uh, 10, uh, 15 million. Well, I got confused there. Um, but um, the, the interesting thing was is we we're really able to keep up with how fast the progress of the, of the project moved forward. And it wasn't in, in um, shortly thereafter that uh, the NEPA document was signed in June of 2018. And in September, we broke ground of 2018. It's about a two and a half year project slated to be competed, completed in 2022. Uh, with uh, Ballot Initiative 1A that passed last year, we were able to accelerate our commitment of $10 million uh, towards construction and $250,000 towards the I-25 PL study. Um, and we initially thought we could contribute 
uh, 5 million in 21 and 5 million in 22, and now we'll be able to fulfill that commitment this year. So, um, if you have any questions, and thanks for all your participations and support of this project and getting it moving forward. Uh, Mr. Partridge and others helped lead that coalition. And it was incredible to see the support moving that forward. So, thanks. Thank you, Art. Questions, comments? Well, Art, we got to speak with you for a little while earlier this week, and I think you say it very well. The theme has been collaboration, and all of these projects and partnerships would not be possible without a really smart and experienced individual like you leading us and directing us. So we really appreciate all of that horsepower that you provide to these projects and making sure that they get accomplished in and around Douglas County. Thanks for those kind words and the opportunity to serve. Thanks. So Art, you do a great job, and we had a phone call with CDOT telling us the project, uh, how they're progressing, and I think they're 81% done on package one, and that the whole package will be done in November of 22, right. which I think is phenomenal, and uh, again, partnership is what all, got all of this done, so thank you. In that deadline of November, is even more impressive because they added several elements, including a climbing lane all the way from Greenland to the truck stop over the hill in Monument, as well as replacing the El Paso County, Douglas County, Palmer Divide interchange. So uh, that came through freight money and, and bridge enterprise money. So they've added elements and they're still ahead of schedule. And they found a bunch of bad material they had to work around as well. Well, that true. But Sometimes the case. <laughs> Thank you, Art. Yeah. Art, I'm just going to say, I think you admitted some of the fine work that really kicked this project off. It's because of your relationship and your knowledge with CDOT. And I believe it was in 2015 when you first came to us and said, we need $250,000 for a study on I-25. And we're thinking, where's Art coming from? <laughs> we have no idea. Well, you're, no doubt your foresight and your knowledge and, it, phenomenal. And then I remember that in January 17 when Executive Director of CEDA at the time, Shailen Bat, came here, made the big announcement. It was actually, I think it was 20, was it 20,000 the move from the C470 20 million. 20 million, 20 million project to go forward with the uh, NEPA study. And we were just amazed. And I remember him, he's kind of snickering and he's like, yeah, well, good luck getting this funded. And I remember we had those discussions and the whole coalition put together and we're wondering, wow, how are we gonna get this done? But we really had to get it done in 2017. And by that fall, it was fully funded. That was great work from you and the many partners we had. And I really wanna give a hats off to former Executive Director Mike Lewis, because he was yeah. one who really saw the importance, no doubt the support from everyone along there and we really did not have any opposition to speak of and so it's just a great project we're very well um, planned out certainly needed and it's great to see it move along like it is because we're now using that as we're going forward to saying why is douglas county positioned so well well no doubt we're between the two metropolitan largest metro metropolitan areas of the state but that I-25 corridor is just gonna be a, a kind of a super highway for us, so well done. And we've had so much positive comments on it. Even I remember an individual last year wrote us an email, you know, the, the traffic is terrible, the, the, the delays, and she said, but if you're gonna have to get stuck in a highway, what, what more of a beautiful, beautiful place could you have than the gap? because of the scenery there and it's so beautiful. And so we thank you. And we're certainly gonna be hopeful, be waiting for the opportunity for the build grant and see if we're gonna get that $8 million grant for the wildlife overpass, which I think you say it maybe September we'll hear. Well, and we're getting um, some additional um, publicity on the project because they're using the I-25 environmental, all the wildlife plan for the whole mitigation plan at, at a big transportation TRB <laughs> seminar. So 
we're getting a little publicity uh, as as a huge project and you know addressing and preserving the natural environment which is real important you know even with big growth so that's great but are you're just a you're um, a big man but you fill those big shoes with phenomenal talent. Well, thanks. Better sit down. That's right. <laughs> we can keep going. Thank you, Art. This time, we'll open up the audience. Anybody would like to address the board regarding item 4E? Seeing no one in the room. Ms. Dunning, anyone on the phone or on the virtual? Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. I see no virtual requests. Thank you. This time we'll close public comment and bring it back to the board for any further questions, comments, discussion, and or motion. My only additional comment is that I think we failed to really thank you, Mr. Chair, for all of your leadership, not only this year, but for all of the years that you've served with regard to these regional transportation projects. Our county will never realize how much effort and sacrifice you've put in to their traffic solutions. So thank you for that. And with that, I would like to make a motion to approve a resolution approving an intergovernmental agreement between the Colorado Department of Transportation and the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas, State of Colorado, regarding cost sharing for the I-25 South Gap project from Monument to Castle Rock, associated with CDOT project number NHPP0252-450-22591. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. All in favor, state aye. 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 And the motion passes. Thank you, Art, for bringing us forward. Great job. And we also want to thank CDOT for all they're doing and, and all the partners. All right. That concludes our agenda items. Any f further county business? No further county business. County manager report and closed. And any commissioner comments? I would just like to say that this is really a highlight of my year, my four years as being a commissioner is to be approving this. Um, in December of 2016, I wrote a letter about how I thought we could get more money for roads by moving, asking voters to move some of the Justice Center sales tax fund over to roads. And I sent it to the Gazette, and I sent a copy to Doug, and he probably read it because I hadn't even been sworn in yet and thought, what is this crazy woman up to? But I just saw so clearly how we could get additional funding for roads because we knew that time I-25 was already a mess. And, and as a citizen, I didn't see any solutions that were in place. And then as soon as I got sworn in, we had, in fact, a week before we got sworn in, we were here with... Um, Sally from El Paso County and John Southers and we had a meeting here about there was progress that was already being talked about for I-25 and and so this is almost four years later and so this is so exciting for me personally and I'm not saying I did not do this by myself that's not what I'm saying but the whole team worked together and we got this done and so to be able to to speed up our contribution to this by more than a year is just amazing. So this is also for the citizens who voted yes last November on 1A. And um, this is the result of their great vote. So thank you for that. Well, and I would be remiss. I would be remiss if I didn't also acknowledge my fellow commissioner, Laura Thomas. She's always had a vision for traffic solutions in this community uh, and fought hard for it. So I'm glad to see this partnership come together and move forward. Thank you, everyone. That concludes our hearing. We are adjourned. Happy hour at three. No. Yeah. <laughs>